Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Stitch Sessions. In this week's tutorial, we are going to work on this really cute and fairly quick spring baby bonnet. I thought it's just perfect for the new season upon us. Spring is here, and I'm super excited about it. And uh, I had some of this leftover white sparkle yarn and a little bit of this green, and I thought, what a perfect combination for springtime and for a baby bonnet. So perfect for all of those newborn spring babies, a nice little add-on to any little one's outfit. So it's fairly simple to make. We're gonna start off by creating the back, which is a flat circle. And um, this follows the principles of how to create a crochet circle. And then we are going to continue working in rows after that. So we start off working in rounds. And then we continue working back and forth in rows and we use the floret stitch, which is such a pretty subtle stitch and it's super easy to create. So if you know how to slip stitch and double crochet, you are good to go with this project. So you'll just need um, your desired color and I would maybe choose another color to create a nice little contrast just like I did here. But of course you can most certainly do it all in a solid color. And FYI, we did use the floret stitch in a another project we did, I believe back in, actually must have been two falls ago, we created the floret stitch boot cuffs and they were very easy and quick as well. So I'll leave a link for that in the description box down below if you are curious. But in the meantime, I'm very excited to get you guys going on this beautiful baby bonnet. Now this is for, um, I would say zero to three months, but if you wanna make a, a slightly larger size, you can reference the hat sizing chart. We have it on the Crochet Crafty website and I will make sure to leave a link directly to that in the description box down below. Um, so you would have to start by creating, if you're gonna go for a little bit of a larger size, you wanna start off by creating a slightly larger circle to begin and then that will give you a better sized fitting for your particular um, little one you're making it for. So in the meantime, let's check out the materials we're using for this project and let's get stitching up our springtime baby bonnet. Okay, so the yarn I'm using for this project is actually yarn I've got left over from another project that I actually created a baby blanket out of this. I love this yarn. You tend to see a lot more of this coming out around Christmas time, but you can find this year round. It's Bernat's premium yarn. And most often I have found this at Walmart. You do, um, you can find Bernat at Michael's, but they don't seem to carry this particular Bernat premium yarn there. It's mostly at Walmart and Hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of a sparkle that runs through it and it's so pretty, so dainty. And it is, the color is white sparkle. It's a medium four weight yarn and it comes in 142 gram skein, which contains 258 yards or 236 meters. Now, as you can see, I have a little bit of it left over. I feel pretty good that I'm gonna have enough and I've got a little bit of leftover yarn for some accent on this. This yarn is the Heartland yarn by Lion Brand, one of my other favorite yarns to use. It's just so soft and lovely. And you've seen me use this for other projects uh, like the Call Me Cables uh, hat and the wedge-shaped shawl. And if you're curious about checking out those uh, projects. I'll leave a link for them in the description box down below. So I would say if you are going to do your bonnet one solid color, a hundred gram a skein is more than enough. We are doing this for a baby from zero to six months. So that should be plenty for you. Now this particular yarn, it is medium weight four. It calls for a five millimeter hook, but I'm actually going to use a six millimeter hook for this project which is also known as a J or a size 10. I just like sometimes to go up a hook size just so that the stitches sit loosely, a little bit more relaxed, and I find it a bit more cozy. 
And as always, make sure that you have a yarn needle on hand to sew in any ends and a pair of scissors, of course, to snip off your yarn. And you might want to have a little some type of stitch marker. I just always use a safety pin uh, just in case you feel that you want to uh, have a little bit more of an easier visual for where your rows start and end or rounds. So we are going to start working in rounds and then we work, we will turn into working in rows. So just, just a little something to have on hand. So let's get started. Okay, so as always, when I'm working with white yarn, because I generally use a white background, I just like to put a, a contrasting, a different color for the background, just so that the yarn will stand out. So that is why I've got my pink sheet here. So we are going to begin by creating a cinch circle, which is similar to creating a, the way you would begin creating a slip knot. So we create that loop and then we just pull the yarn through. Now with a slip knot, normally I would cinch this completely shut, but we're going to leave it open. So <coughs> that is essentially our ring. Now I know you're thinking this is really wonky here. So I'm just gonna take that long tail and cinch it a little bit closer around my hook and then chain one. So what that does is that now secures my ring. And I always take that little tail out to the front there. So that is my magic ring, also known as a cinch circle. And I'm gonna chain an additional chain. So I've got two chains now. And that is gonna give me the height of a half double crochet stitch. And those are the stitches we're gonna use to create a really simple uh, bonnet here. So we're now gonna proceed to crochet a half double crochet into the ring. So you'll yarn over, insert your hook into the ring and pull up a loop. So you have three loops and you'll yarn over and pull through all three, okay? And that is what you're gonna do until you have a total of 10 stitches. So you're gonna continue to yarn over, pull up a loop, and then pull through all three loops. And once you've got your total number, I will meet up with you shortly. And for this project, that chain two we started with will not count as a stitch. That was just placed there to give us the height. So you will have a total of 10 half double crochet stitches in your ring. Okay, so I now have 10 half double crochet stitches and I've started to cinch in my circle there. And so you can see it's creating a nice circle. So I'm just gonna take that short tail now and I'm going to pull on it so that it cinches the center of my circle shut. See how it's snuggling in like that? Don't be afraid to pull it a little bit more tautly so that it's nice and tight. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the top of that very first half double crochet. Now remember we said the chain two does not count as anything because it tends to get lost in there. So I am going to go into the top of the half double crochet right there and I'm going to slip stitch to join my round. So at the end of round one, I should have 10 stitches in total. If you're ever uncertain, just start and count all the way back around, okay? So now we're gonna go on to round number two. So for round number two, you are going to chain two, okay? And now this will count as a stitch. Back into the very same stitch, we're gonna place a half double crochet stitch. Just like that. And into every stitch for this round, we are gonna to continue to place two half double crochets. So we have one and we have two. Okay, just like that. And into the next stitch, you will then place two half double crochets. And at the end of round number two, you should have 20 stitches. Okay, so I finished round number two and I have 20 stitches. Now, a lot of times this right here will make you think that you still have one more stitch to go into. So don't be fooled, that is a false stitch because we slip stitched out of that. So it tends to shift over and make people think that there is still one more stitch. If you're ever unsure, remember, go back and count. So this follows the principles of how to crochet a basic circle and keep your project staying nice and flat. 
So this is not a stitch, so I'm gonna go into, I'm gonna find the top of that chain two. Remember we chain two at the top? And right into there, I'm gonna slip stitch to join. I'm gonna ignore what I, what might look like another stitch for you. So you're gonna slip stitch to join, and see, it cinches it in nicely like that. So we're now gonna go on to round number three. I'm gonna start you off on round number three, and then I'm gonna let you keep going until uh, to complete round number four and number five on your own and i'll explain that in a second so what we're going to do again is we're going to chain two one two and now what we're going to do is we're going to move to the very next stitch and we're going to place two half double crochets into that stitch so that chain two does count as a stitch so that's considered one half double crochet so that's the first one into the next stitch and right back into that same stitch we're gonna place another half double crochet. So the chain two counts as one, then we have two double crochets. Now into the next stitch, we're only going to place one half double crochet. Then we move to the next stitch and we place two. So hopefully you can see the pattern that's happening in round number three. Okay, so for round number three, we are placing an increase, which is two half double crochets into every second stitch. So we have one, two, one, two, and then you continue. One stitch, two stitch, one stitch, two stitches, one stitch, two stitches, all the way around. The end of round three, you should have 30 stitches. So if you remember my tutorial on how to create a how to crochet a circle. Of course, I'll leave a link for that in the description box down below. It's a great tool for um, helping you understand how to create a circle of any size. Every time you go on to another round, you're gonna place an increase in a different stitch. So for round three, we're placing it in every other stitch. When you slip stitch and go on to round number four, you're still gonna do your chain two, but the repeat for that round will be a half double crochet, half double crochet, and then two. So you have one, one, and two. One, one, and two. So now you're doing an increase into every third stitch, okay? Then when you go on to round number five, you are going to have three stitches in between every increase. So for round number five, you're gonna chain two, and then half double crochet into each of the next two stitches, and then increase. So your repeat would be one, 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 two stitches, one, 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 two stitches. So that means into each of the next three stitches, it would be one half double crochet, and then into the fourth, it would be a uh, an increase, which is two half double crochets. And that would be the repeat for round number five. Okay, so I am gonna set you loose here you're gonna complete round number three, go on to round number four, and then round number five, and I'll meet back up with you then to talk about how we're gonna to continue to increase the size of our bonnet. Okay, I've finished round five, and so my work looks like this, and I have 50 stitches in total. So what we're gonna do next is we're now gonna introduce our florette stitch into this next round. So this is round six we are working on. And so I've slip stitched to join the previous round, but what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna turn our work this time. And the reason we do that is the florette stitch, we kind of work it from the back and the texture turns out on the front. So because this is gonna be the front of our work, we're gonna turn our work just gonna move that over there. And I'm going to slip stitch back into this last stitch here. So this is now my first stitch. So I'm gonna slip stitch into that. And I don't wanna do it too tightly. And then into the next stitch, I'm going to double crochet. So instead of half double crochets, we're going to do double crochets. So this time we're gonna pull through the first two loops only and then through the last two. And then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. And so we're gonna alternate between slip stitches and double crochets. So into the next stitch, we're going to double crochet. Oh, 
whoops, let me get my background back here. I completely forgot white on white doesn't show up the greatest. Okay, so then again, in the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch. And in the following stitch, we're going to double crochet. And this is what you're gonna do all the way around. So there are no increases in this round, by the way. So now when I just turn it over, just to show you, see, now you can see that little pushed out texture there. It looks like a little mini bobble stitch, okay? So that is what you're gonna do into every single stitch all the way around, and you should still have 50 stitches at the end of round five. Okay, and I'm coming up to my last stitch here, and I'm just gonna slip stitch, okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I am just going to chain one and turn my work again. So now you can see where the texture is really coming through. So notice I did not slip stitch to join. I just chained one and turned. And now what we're gonna do is we are going to place a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually just going to skip this stitch and I'm gonna go right away into the next stitch here and I'm going to single crochet. So we're just decreasing by one stitch on this side and I'm just gonna continue to single crochet all the way around. So sometimes the there, every second stitch seems to be a little bit nestled in there because that's where we slip stitch. And this is why it's very important to not slip stitch too tightly when you're doing the slip stitches. Okay, just like that. So you're gonna single crochet all the way around and then when you have one stitch left, which is that slip stitch right there. Now, with this white yarn, might be a little tricky to see. This is where I recommend maybe placing that stitch marker there just so that it'll remind you when you come back around where that slip stitch is from the previous row. So that's it, this is row number seven. You're gonna come all the way around and then I'll meet up with you on the other side. Okay, so I have two stitches left. I've got where I have the stitch marker and then I've got one more stitch. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place my last single crochet into this stitch. And I'm not gonna work that stitch anymore. So now in round seven, you should have 48 stitches and you can see actually your work is starting to curl in like that and that is exactly what should be happening, okay? From here on out, you're now gonna repeat row six and row seven and maintain your stitch count at 48 stitches. So just in row seven, we decreased at the beginning and at the end. And from now on, you're gonna keep 48 stitches and you are just going to always turn your work. So we are no longer working in rounds, we're gonna work in rows. So for row number eight, you're gonna chain one, turn your work, and we're gonna go back and do the floret stitch again. So the very first stitch, you're going to slip stitch. And then the next stitch, you will double crochet. Slip stitch into the next stitch. And double crochet into the next. Okay, so if I turn that around, you can see you're back to that floret stitch. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and repeat a row six and seven until you get to row number 20. And once you get to row number 20, I'm going to meet you there. We're going to change colors and do a little trim around the top of our hat before we go ahead and do our ties. Okay, so I've come to the end of row 20 and that's my single crochet row here. So I've got something that looks like this. So you can really see it's taking form here. And, uh, oh, let me just get my background here. It's always tricky when you have white yarn on a white background. Okay, so you've got a nice step there. And so I have just finished I'm in my last stitch, but instead of resolving it, I'm gonna bring in my green color. And this is a nice smooth way to transition to a different color. So I'm bringing in my green 
and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to loop it through. Now you can certainly place a slip knot on there and bring it through, but a lot of times this is what I do. So I'm just gonna resolve that single crochet by pulling the green through, and I just, I'm just gonna throw both of those ends on that side, and then I'm going to chain one. And at this point, I will just snip off my white, and can even tie a little knot here, just like that. Then I'll weave those in afterwards. Okay, then I'm gonna turn my work and I'm gonna continue and do one more row of that florette stitch, okay? So that first stitch is a slip stitch. Okay, and then we do our double crochet as usual. So nothing different, nothing new. The only thing is we are now trimming it out in the green color just to add a little accent here. Make it a little extra springy. And so I just wanted you guys to see the effect. So it's just this pretty little florette stitch, a little trim there around the edge. So you're gonna do that all the way around. And when you get to the end, you're actually gonna snip off your green yarn. And then we are gonna talk about creating our chin straps. Okay, so here is the final row complete. This is row number 21. So you can see those really pretty florette stitches. Just gives that, that beautiful little spring accent. And so I've snipped my yarn, and now we are gonna create our straps, okay? So I'm gonna use my green yarn actually to do that, and it's gonna create a nice little complete package, so to speak. So we're gonna begin first by placing a slip knot on our hook here. And we're gonna start off by chaining 45. So we have one, two, three, four. Okay, so I have 45 chains here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up our bonnet again. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that my right side is facing to me and I am gonna work on the hat's left side. So that way I just finished working this green and then I'm gonna work along the bottom here. So I wanna find that very last stitch that was worked. So it's right there. I'm gonna insert my hook and I'm just gonna make sure my long tail is on that side of me. I don't want it to be underneath towards me. So I'm gonna insert my hook and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop and resolve it like a single crochet. So that's gonna look like the chain is continuously going into the hat there, the edge of the hat. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna place a single crochet into the side of each row that we created there. So remember that we had a total of 20 rows, 21 with the green. And so when you come along here, you're gonna have 20, and then we've got a couple of stitches here, which are two stitches here, and then another 20 here. So essentially you should have about 42 stitches going around. Now you may have 40 or you may have 44, it's not the end of the world. What you wanna do is make sure when you're coming across here that your work is looking fairly even and consistent. So I'm gonna actually try to always work into stitches and not just gaps might be a little tricky, but I find that that's what's gonna help the work sit nice and even. So there is an actual stitch. So some of the rows were ending with single crochets and some of them ended with slip stitches. So the slip stitches might be a little bit more snug to get through, but just be patient and work your single crochets through there. And then every couple of stitches just pull back, whoops. And every couple of stitches, just pull back and evaluate your work and see how it looks. So you want it to look nice and consistent. So I'm pretty happy with that. And see how, see how your chain, your chain now looks like it just runs smoothly into those single crochets, which is exactly what we wanted. And now the green creates a full trim. 
Okay, so go ahead and do that. And when you come to the end here, I'm gonna meet up with you here, just talk you through what's gonna happen next. Okay, so I've just come to the very end here on the other side. So you can see that green trim is just looking really nice. I'm really happy with it. it came out very uniform. And so now what we wanna do is, I'm just gonna do one more right into the very first stitch of the green, just to keep it nice and consistent. See how that was the first stitch? So I'm going to single crochet into there. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to chain up another 45 chains. And of course, I'm gonna weave that in later. So I'm gonna continue one, two, three, four. Okay, so I've done my other 45 chains. So you can see it creates the tie here or the strap. And so what, what I wanna do now is just give it a little bit of fortification. So what we're gonna do is we're now going to go back into this chain and what we're gonna do is we are going to slip stitch. So we're gonna skip that first chain there into the next one. You're gonna insert your hook and slip stitch. You're gonna do that going into every single chain, including all of the single crochet stitches and back down the other strap or the other side of the strap that we created. Okay, so I have finished my slip stitches all the way around. So you can see it's just nice and uniform there. And I've just wo woven in all of my ends and my bonnet is complete. It's so adorable. I love how this dainty little accent of green just elevates it a little bit more. Perfect for a spring bonnet. So I hope that you've enjoyed working on this a super cute little project. And I hope you found it easier than maybe you thought it might be if you're a little bit newer to crochet. Uh, or if you are experienced, I hope you found it a little delightful project to work on. So if you have any questions at all about the florette stitch or anything in this bonnet project, make sure to drop it for me in the comment box down below. And as always, if you want to, you can reach me directly at info at crochetcrafty.com. And as always, I invite you to come over and visit me on the website at crochetcrafty.com and check out all of my bonus tools. I've got all the access to uh, previous YouTube videos as well. And make sure to sign up for my monthly newsletter. I gift you a free written pattern every month. And if you like this type of project, make sure to give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see some more baby items, for example. And that lets me know that I'm on the right track with the types of projects that you want to see. In fact, I have some new baby additions coming up in my friend and family circle in the next little while. So you'll most likely see a few more baby items coming your way. Now, don't forget, come and say hi to me. I'm on the socials on Instagram and Facebook at The Stitch Sessions. So in the meantime, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Continue to take good care of yourselves and happy crocheting. I hope you're enjoying your current projects on top of the doing this bonnet. And I look forward to seeing you in next week's session. Take care.